What is up, you sexy YouTube mother lovers, and welcome back to another episode of Cursed Gun Images. Not just any Cursed Gun Images, but specifically talking about the cursed crap that's coming out of the new Call of Duty Vanguard. As you can probably tell by my voice, I'm just now getting over a little bit of sickness. Calm down, it's not what you think. Unless what you think is chlamydia, and in that case, still probably no. Yeah, I was down for a couple days, kept that kind of like winter cold thing going on, you know, the season's changing. Thankfully, I was able to beat it pretty quickly before it affected our upload schedule too much. And what is my reward for, for beating that sickness super fast? I get to do cursed gun images. So, uh, awesome. I've also been cutting down on my drinking significantly, but this is an episode that I don't think I can quite get through without uh, a little bit of liquid help. So without further ado, Call of Duty Vanguard. Call of Duty Vanguard is the latest reskinning. Call of Duty Vanguard is the latest original entry in the Call of Duty franchise. Once again, going back to World War II, Vanguard takes a unique take on the gunsmithing and weapons customization element of the game. And if there's one thing that we learned from the early footage of Vanguard, it was that the gunplay was obviously very well researched. By that, I mean it was a shit show. In their very first teaser release, they proved they didn't know how stens work. You know, Sten, the, the open bolt submachine gun that's completely captured within that little metal tube. Very simple, very common gun. Yeah, they had the bolt phasing out the back of the fucking tube like it's gonna hit the dude in the face or something. But as we've actually mentioned on cursed gun images before, some of their early footage of customized firearms included an MP40 in 9mm Makarov, a Thompson in 5.7, a uh, C96 broom handle Mauser with a red dot in 50 caliber, and a 9-line, or Mosin Nagant, in 12 7 by 108 millimeter, AKA Russian 50 cal. It was at this moment I realized they fucked up and I would have to pay the price by doing this video. And to no one's surprise, it's worse than we thought. So let's break down what I think are some of the worst offenders and probably just most heinous disrespects of uh, some of my favorite firearms in the game. Let's start with the German weapons first because I have a real soft spot for a lot of the World War II German machine guns and uh, They'll, they'll hurt the worst, and I kind of want to rip that band-aid off. Now this, as all of you should recognize, is the MG42. Bad mustache man's buzzsaw. And probably just one of the most iconic weapons of World War II in general. I am trying my fucking hardest to get my hands on one of these right now. This is how it looks in its original configuration. Obviously it's a belt-fed 8mm Mauser, light machine gun with a super high cyclic rate, and it's just all around sexy. But uh, let's see what Vanguard has to say about that. Meet the Vanguard MG42. As you can see, for higher ergonomics, they have completely removed the stock, shortened the barrel uh, to something that is just completely unusable. It appears they've also deleted the removable barrel feature. Nice. Added a Thompson grip, of course, because you've got to have some way of pretending to control this thing. And of course, a red dot sight. Now I will be talking about the red dot sights probably here in a second because my god do I have a rant to go on about that because Call of Duty Vanguard fucking loves red dots. Call of Duty Vanguard is teaching an entire generation of teenagers that your great grandfather stormed the beaches of Normandy with a fucking EOTech. But no, I'm not gonna do that now, I, I can wait, it's no, no big deal. But yeah, look at how they massacred my boy. I was gonna point out how hard it is to uh, fire an MG42 while you're standing when it has the stock. It's a big gun, big caliber, high cyclic rate. All of those things scream impossible to control. Now we can just cut the fucking stock off and, and manhandle this thing like it's a fucking submachine gun. That's, that's okay. God, I should have been better prepared for the horrors that would be the cursed guns of Call of Duty Vanguard. I knew I was doing this. I think I mentioned it in the last cursed gun images that we were going to be doing this video. I also did mention on that video that if we got 200,000 likes that we would be building a looty. That weird improvised stamp sheet metal 9mm submachine gun. We didn't hit our goal on that video, but I tell you what, if we get 150,000 likes on this video, I just really want to build a looty, guys. I think it'd be cool. We have the licenses to do it in its full auto glory, just like God intended. Let's go ahead, hit that like button, and if you haven't already subscribed, you don't want to miss a looty. Oddly enough, there's really not a lot of videos on them on uh, YouTube, probably because most people who build them don't really want to talk about it. I just think it's cool. It's a neat part of firearm history, and speaking of history, let's go back to the ways Call of Duty has fucked up my favorite firearms of history. Next up, the Sturmgewehr. The MP44 or the STG44, one of the world's first assault rifles and just all around one of the sexiest firearms ever produced. Mm. 
I'm in the process of acquiring one of these for the channel as well because I am convinced my firearm collection will never be complete until I own one. Chambered in the intermediate 8mm Kurtz, this was one of the world's first assault rifle, or Sturm rifle, or Sturmgewehr, if you will. A unicorn for any gun collection, so of course, let's fucking ruin it. Yeah, that's better. The big thing with Vanguard is deleting the stock entirely. Uh, they seem to be operating under the assumption that getting rid of the stock uh, makes it easier to manage or, uh, or faster, move faster with it and not make it completely fucking unusable unless you're hip firing it. One port muzzle brake and a stamped sheet metal foregrip. That's a nice feature. That looks like an MG34 drum uh, that they just shoved in there because I swear to God, this is probably what happened. The developers just Googled 8mm drum because this is an 8mm Kurtz. They saw the 8mm Mauser drum for the MG34s and the MG42 and they said, oh cool, they did make that. And then they just slapped it on. Yeah, stretch it, fit it, whatever. So for those of you who don't know, 8mm Kurtz, 8mm Mauser. They're not the same thing. And of course, it has a red dot sight. Okay, I I've held it in for like that many minutes and I, I, I just can't. I'm gonna fucking rant about this now. Call of Duty Vanguard loves red dot sights. In fact, Call of Duty loved them back in Call of Duty World War II, but Vanguard has a real hard on for them. Red dot sights did not fucking exist. And I can already hear you couple dissenters out there, well, Brennan, technically the red dot sight was invented in the early 1900s, so it's been around for a while and they used them in World War II. No. It is true, the concept for the red dot sight or the reflex sight or the reflexor sight was invented in the very early 1900s. It was a way of projecting a laser diode onto a piece of glass to use as an optic uh, that would avoid a parallax shift, which is what basically, if you're moving your head left to right, the laser is not gonna move with you. The laser is gonna stay roughly in the same spot relative to you to where you're still making the same accurate hit. So you don't have to be perfectly lined up on it every single time. Whereas if you just drew a little red dot on a piece of plastic, that really wouldn't work the same. So that did exist. The problem is nobody knew how to shrink the goddamn things, especially not to the level of being able to be used on a fucking sidearm. These did see use in World War II, but they were on things like aircraft, anti-aircraft guns, tanks, something you could make it function by a big ass magic laser box inside your anti-aircraft gun powered by a car battery versus carried around on your bolt action rifle. What's worse is that Call of Duty Vanguard knows this because the first dot that they include on their list of red dots to choose from is none other than the NIDAR Model 47. This was the first real commercially available reflex sight for a firearm. And the dates almost line up because it was patented in 1945. In September, months after World War II was over, the reflex sight as we know it really didn't become a commercial thing until around the mid 70s. And even still, the US Army never really adopted it until the early 2000s. So by that timeline, Call of Duty Vanguard is jumping ahead by like 60 fucking years. It's like making a Civil War game where instead of giving General Grant a Civil War black powder pistol, you give him a 1911. I know this game's not supposed to be super realistic and I'll, I'll talk about that a little later, but come on, man, this one's just rough. And there are actually people defending it. So the point is, this was not a thing that was used during World War II on small arms and Call of Duty Vanguard can get Mick fucked on this choose your reticle bullshit. Okay, okay, I'm done, I'm done. Happy place, happy place. But speaking of happy places and red dots, I'm actually really excited to say that our new sponsor is Euro Optic. Perfect sponsor for the channel and a great place to pick up red dot, reflex, hollow sights, scopes, whatever you want. I think I'm gonna use them to pick up an ACOG for the scar back there because scar 17s and ACOGs go together a lot, peas and carrots. Plus they have their red shipping program, which is guaranteed one to two day shipping on stuff. It's basically like prime, but for gun shit. Super excited to have Euro Optic as a sponsor, so go ahead and check them out. Back to, back to Vanguard. Fuck. So to round out the German weapons, we've got a two for one. Two of my favorite firearms, we've got the MP40 and the Luger, which is inexplicably referred to as the Klause. Klause. Santa Claus is coming to town. <laughs> First, let's look over the MP40, the open bolt nine millimeter submachine gun used by the Germans during World War II. Just a really damn good looking gun. Probably one of the most iconic firearms in history. The original ghetto blaster, if you will. So let's fuck it up. Yeah, that's pretty not great. So you take that nice top folding stock and turn it into something that absolutely doesn't fucking fold, even though it's still called a folding stock. Got a nice little drum mag here. A barrel now cut so short that an artillery Luger is definitely longer. 
a red dot sight. We talked about that. And on a gun known for one of the best fucking magwell holds ever, we have a stamped sheet metal forward grip in probably one of the most awkward locations you could ever put it. Thank you, Vanguard, very cool. Now moving on to the Luger. The P08 Luger is a German handgun that is, again, very iconic. It co-evolved with the 1911 and in fact competed with the 1911 on several pre-war contracts. And like the 1911, saw use in both World War I and World War II. Predominantly chambered in 9mm Luger, obviously. It is one of the most aesthetic handguns I own and a must-have for any serious historic collector. Which is why this is really gonna hurt. Ta-da! The Enhanced Klauser. So on our Luger, we have a snail drum magazine, which believe it or not, that was a thing, that, that did exist. We've got a gnarly fluted barrel with a, uh, a competition ported break there at the end. Grip tape to be extra tactical. Why just have a red dot when you can have two? I know the Luger is kind of synonymous with war crimes, but this is a war crime. It's funny, people see a Luger and they think war crime, but they don't really think that when they see a Mosin de Gant, although I'm pretty sure way more people got, y you know what, Never mind. let's move on. But next up, we're gonna go over to the Russian weapons and then we'll round things out with the American weapons. Of course, you know me, I'm an AK guy. I got a soft spot for the Russian stuff. So let's start out with a submachine gun that is basically synonymous with Russian submachine gun in World War II, the PPSH or the Papa Shaw. Seriously, Russians are always up in the comments whenever I talk about the PPSH-41. It's like, it's not that, it's the Papa Shaw. Which to my understanding is just the phonetic pronunciation in Russia of PPSH which is just an acronym for like submachine gun of Spagen. Just like the PPS-43 is the same thing, but for Sudayev or Sudayev. But I don't live in Russia. I don't really speak Russian. So we pronounce things like acronyms, as in the letters in the, the, the acronym. So PPS-43 and PPSH-41. Is it incorrect? In Russia, probably. In fact, they even let you add the iconic 71 round drum magazine. If you think this is a good looking gun, you're correct. It's a really good looking gun. But you could do a weird thing to this gun in this game. Something that I wasn't expecting out of a cursed gun image, but I, I don't know how to respond to this. So this is your gunsmith editor in, uh, in Call of Duty Vanguard. Let's see, what are we gonna do here? Let's, let's go ahead and add a break. It's all these ridiculous, like Thompson break, oil can silencer, whatever, man. Just basic break here. Barrel, okay, so we got this long boy, got a real short boy, got whatever this suppressor looking thing is. The, the Zac 280 millimeter light? Well, that's weird. That's just a PPS 43 shroud. That's weird. We could just cut off the front end and make it PPS 43 front end, but that's just a barrel shroud. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, let's go over here to the stock. Let me see, we got some options here. Got skeletal stock, got this just custom, you know, wood stuff. Wait a minute, hold up. You remove the stock or you can put a folding stock on it and then you've just created a PPS 43. Like, especially if you put the stick bag back in it. That is literally, that that is, that is a PPS 43. <laughs> it's literally the same picture. It's worthy of noting that the PPS-43 and the PPSH-41 are pretty closely related being open bolt submachine guns in 7.62x25. Both very simple tube guns, they've got a similar looking shroud. But they're not the same gun and they don't take interchangeable parts. And you sure as shit just can't stick a PPS-43 lower on a PPSH-41, which is exactly what they fucking did here. So yeah, that's what's cursed about the PPSH-41 is that you can literally just make it a different fucking firearm. Cursed? I guess? Just weird. Why? Your PPSH-41 went to the gunsmith shop, had a reassignment surgery, and came out a PPS-43. Which, by the way, it's 2021, you bigots. Submachine gun identity is a spectrum, and it's up to the firearm to make that choice. But yeah, this is fucking ridiculous. So, moving on. So while we're talking about the PPS-43 and Sudayev, there's a gun that they added in Call of Duty Vanguard that I will give them a lot of credit for. I'm really glad they added it, because it is a little-known firearm, and it is a really cool one. Still never saw use in World War II, so you still fucked that up, but I give you kudos for even knowing what the fuck this thing is. One of the guns included was the AS-44, also known as the Automatic Sedaev model of 1944. 
This was an experimental rifle and by all means a precursor to the AK-47 in a lot of ways. A lot of small things like the swiveling selector also acting as a dust cover to keep dirt out of the action that was also adopted on the AK. Uh, of course, it was in 7.62x39 with a long stroke gas piston. This thing resembled the AK in a lot of ways. Of course, it was still, I think it was tilting bolt operated, more like the SKS. So it really was kind of bridging the gap between the SKS and what would become the AK-47. Sadaev is a brilliant firearms designer, and there is a possibility that if he did not die suddenly in, in 1946, as a relatively young guy, he just, he just, uh, he died early, and uh, there's a possible you know, alternate reality where he went on to perfect these designs and actually beats Kalashnikov uh, at the trials that birthed the AK-47. Little things like that in firearm history are really cool to think about, knowing where things came from, uh, knowing where they're going, little what ifs and could be's. I just, I think that's super neat. So let's fuck that up. Yeah, that's more like it. It's World War II, so everything needs a Thompson foregrip. Little MP5 style collapsible stock, nice touch. Grip tape, because everybody's got to be a fucking goon these days. Uber tactical reflex sight on top of your little scope there. Nice little tactical short barrel to make sure you don't get full powder burn out of your cartridge. And a nice 762 by 39 drum there with a non-tapered body, like a 308, because fuck it. Not gonna lie, this almost looks kind of hot, except, you know, it's a priceless fucking prototype. I'm pretty sure the only versions of the AS44 that exist are in museums, uh, so I'm pretty sure some museum caretakers like rolling over in their sleep about this. I was gonna say grave, that doesn't make any fucking sense. But I'm done creaming over the, oh no, I'm not, I'm not actually. <laughs> we still have one more Russian gun to talk about. How could I forget the iconic Mosin Nagat? The beautiful Mosin, the infantry rifle, bolt action rifle used by Russia during World War I, World War II, and I'm pretty sure in some degree, pretty much ever since then, you know for sure they still have these in something like the equivalent of the National Guard of Russia somewhere. They just have piles of these fucking things. I actually own one of these. This is the uh, the sniper variant, the uh, the PU Mosin. Uh, we did a video on that relatively recently that nobody watched, so cool. So let's see what the meta is for this Mosin and Vanguard. Oh yes, such tactical, much wow. Okay, this may not be completely the meta, like I added that... <laughs> that's, scope with the dot on top because frankly it's just fucking ridiculous and it's it's just it's it's a running joke with myself at this point conical muzzle device whatever the fuck this is as a stock this it's like steampunk bullshit thompson grip because it world war ii everything need thompson grip and a 20 round magazine like i can't see it because the shading and i think that might be intentional but is that mag release coming out of the magazine itself not how mag releases work, guys. Don't worry if this isn't bad enough for you. Uh, this is 7.62 by 54R rounds here, but our 20 round magazine is in fact 30 out six. Doesn't have to make sense. But now we're done with the Russian guns. Time to move on to the good old American hardware. And of course, we can't do that without talking about the 1911. The gun that won two world wars. John Moses Browning's gift to the world chambered in 45 ACP because at the time they did not make 46. Beloved by collectors and FUDs everywhere, this was the American sidearm of World War II. But it's Call of Duty and everybody could be a gunsmith, so what can we do with it? Voila! We have a three-gunner sidearm, I suppose. Got our heavy-duty long slide with our compensator up front. Got our telescope-looking optic up here that is mounted directly to the slide, so watch out for that. Grip tape, because uh, grip tape... And an 18-round magazine that is so gaudy and long, they gave you extra finger grooves. Honestly, this isn't really that much cursed than anything you see at like a three gun competition. This just looks like a modded out 2011. Let's move on now to the standard infantry rifle of the American soldier during World War II and the grandfather to the AK-47 itself, the M1 Garand. Also a little butthurt that they call this a marksman rifle in the game. This is this is what was just standard issue. Like I know why they don't include it in like the assault rifle category, but that's that's what this was. They didn't marksman the beaches at Normandy, my boy, they assaulted them. But yeah, I love myself some Garand, so uh, let's see what we can do. This is probably one of the worst ones in the game. Cut off our stock here, gave us a paratrooper folder here. Got our holographic sight. M1 carbine style, I guess vented upper handguard. Conical muzzle brake. A wooden fence post for a forward grip. Cut down barrel, of course. And a 16 round drum magazine. 
that looks exactly like the drum magazine they put on the AS44. They just copy-paste that shit. John Garand, I know you're Canadian, so you probably heard this a lot during your life, but I'm sorry. We couldn't talk about American machine guns in World War II if we didn't talk about the BAR. The BAR, being the Browning Automatic Rifle, which I am also butthurt, is included in the assault rifle section, and not light machine guns, which is exactly what this was back in the day. This was the squad automatic weapon. Super neat piece. This was also the Bonnie and Clyde gun. So uh, yeah, let's see what Vanguard has to say. Yeah, this one's probably the worst in my opinion. Delete the stock because that helps. Reduce the barrel, who needs velocity anyway? Cut down your gas system here. Put a forward grip, but make sure you wrap it in cheap leather first. Reflex sight. And weird, this looks like an AR-15 mag almost. It's uh, just like, like a little thicker. I wonder what caliber that is. Oh, it's 50 BMG. That is a 50 BMG 30 round magazine. The BAR is originally chambered in 30 out 6. 50 BMG is basically just a really scaled up 30 out 6. It was a cartridge that was actually developed by Browning himself. The fact that the team that did this thinks that you could just rechamber a 30 out 6 in 50 BMG is just laughable. In that case, why not just rechamber an AK in 50 BMG and just be over with? Just swap the barrel in the magazine, man. It's not that big a deal. And I know for a fact there are those of you out there that unironically believe that's true. But no, it's shit like this that just drives me fucking crazy. Between the red dots, the, the crazy shit you could do to these guns nobody ever did, chambering guns just randomly in calibers that are completely unfeasible, like 50 BMG. Not even getting into the diversity elements of this game, where they would have you believe that Butch Elsa here would be defending the beaches of Normandy. It's a World War II game that just goes out of its way to be utterly ridiculous and just disregard history entirely. And I know, I know it's not supposed to be realistic necessarily. There are plenty of games that sacrifice realism in order to be fun, just to, to make it a good game. I'm totally cool with that. I play a lot of games all the time that I could just suspend my disbelief and totally accept some bullshit that's not technically correct or whatever, just to have fun playing the game. The problem is Call of Duty Vanguard isn't fun. It's a reskin of the other Call of Duty games that somehow they've managed to make it worse. So if you're gonna sacrifice realism to make the game fun, at least have a fun game. I played this for the first time the other day at the Zydax trip, which is a fantastic trip. I love Zydax, but holy fuck, this game is just, it's, it's not good. And that sucks, man, because I grew up loving Call of Duty. I started on Modern Warfare, the original Call of Duty 4. I went to World of War, I played Black Ops 1, campaign was fucking great. I think of Call of Duty and I think old times, I think positive thoughts. Again, positive thoughts are not the reason why I'm sick, <coughs> by the way. But it sucks that the game is just degraded so much, you know? I wanna get back to the days of fun Call of Duty. Good campaigns, good multiplayer, having fun with my friends, saying shit on Xbox Live I probably would never repeat in public. And definitely not on Twitter. So if anybody at Call of Duty is still actually listening to me and not planning to sabotage my car, me and I'm sure anybody in my position that you'd wanna choose from in the firearms industry would be more than happy to help you out with these games. I know like with Modern Warfare, you guys consulted with Lucas and a, a couple of the other people that have actual firearms training and that was some of the best, you know, transition mag reload animations. Like you guys actually put in the work and it looked good. If you guys wanna try to get the guns right next time, I will literally do this for free. If not, I understand. You're trying to make a fun game. Please just maybe do that. Anyhow, I'm just ranting now. I, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know we've been saving it for a while. For my hashtag AKG notification squad, guys, make sure you're still subscribed. YouTube's been doing that weird up, unsub thing again lately, so make sure to check on that. That's all I've got for you guys today. I appreciate you watching to the end, and as always, I will see you sexy YouTube mother lovers in the next video. Thanks. Fear is my obsession to make the perfect weapon Like us putting rise to the top But I can't let you can stop, can stop, can stop, can stop, can stop, can stop, can stop So without further ado